Do you want an easy way to manage all your Docker containers? Are you tired of keeping up with all the different port numbers? Would you like a way to manage your smart home? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to show you an easy way to do this with Heimdall and PFSense. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Run Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using Heimdall and Docker to manage and document your smart home. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available. I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're talking about in this video, and that's how to use Heimdall and Docker and PFSense to manage your smart home. First, we're going to talk about installing Heimdall. Next, we're going to show you something that you not heard a lot of talk about, and it's giving Heimdall a public IP address, at least public within your smart home. And then we're going to show you how to use this to help document your smart home. As you get more and more into adding things to Docker or to your smart home, you're going to have more and more web pages to go through to. The thing to start thinking about is, especially if you're hosting on Docker, and sometimes if you're not, those management pages or portals are going to have different port numbers. Even though you may start out with an HTTP or HTTPS, you're still going to have those to deal with. And the trick is keeping all those up here. Well, using Heimdall, this is going to be a way to not have to worry about that because once you've got it set up in Heimdall, A, you remember the application that's there, B, and you know how to get to it. Then all you got to worry about is remembering username and password. And if you're not using a password manager by now, Please do. You'll you'll thank yourself later, especially when you move between services or devices and you think you remember the IP address and the username and the password and you start having trying to find stuff and it just makes it easier. Let's go ahead and get started here. So I've already got some notes lined out here to make this easier. It's a two step process to get this up and running. Maybe a little bit more, but we'll we'll get there. So first we're going to create the volume that Docker is going to use. And with the implementation that I've got on Ubuntu, anytime I go with Docker, and I know there's a way around it, but it's a good security reason that I've not made things a little bit easier. If I don't start anything before Docker with sudo, it's not going to work. So it's kind of a nice little fail safe situation. We will create the volume. First time it's going to ask us for the password and it should keep it cached. On. Okay, now that's just an indication that it's got it done. So if we go sudo or sudo docker volumes list. So you see it's created. So it, it's told you that it's there as long as with the other currently available volumes. This is something that we'll, we'll come back to this here in a moment. You'll want to change this to your country and the nearest city for the time zone you're in. These two lines right here, keep these in mind because these will go away here in just a little bit and explain why. Now these are the internal port numbers. And this is one of the nice things with Docker is you can minimize the IP addresses that you have to use on the network. You don't have to worry about overlapping port numbers because because it will make that happen because it's going to say take the 8006 as its external and remap it to 80 internal. We'll have a way around here in just a moment. So let's go ahead, copy. I've already got that pasted, so we'll hit enter. So it's got to go download everything, which for the first time you've done it, or if it has a found a newer image in the repository, then it's going to go ahead and grab that. So we'll have that here in just a moment. Now, at this point, it's going to act like it's done, and it is, but it's something it, it thinks is not working right or it hasn't gotten something to terminate with. So we'll do a control C. That's going to stop everything. Not a problem. We'll actually get it restarted the way we want to. I'll go back over here to the browser. I was trying to get into Heimdall when I really meant to get into Portainer, which if you're doing this on top of Docker, this is what's going to be your saving grace and making it a little bit easier. We will get in. Okay, now we will go here to containers and see Heimdall is showing stopped. That's fine. We can fix that. Now, what we'll want to do is go down here is we'll say unless stopped. Okay, so that's fine. It's just because it the script didn't release back to the command prompt. So all that's showing as started. And we will go down here in 8006. As you are installing your latest smart home device, grab a copy of my smart home checklist. This will help you record information about each device as you set it up. This will prove helpful when you need to find out where to get the firmware updates from or support on that device. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information 
to anyone. It helps when you bother to check your IP address. That was my problem with not getting in. And this is what you're going to see the first time in. So that's not a problem. Click the double arrows and we will get an item on the dashboard. You could have done it. Oh, that's not right. Okay. Okay. We'll add an application. I'm dull. 98 and let's shift over to the command prompt. I want to double check something. It's listing on 8006 colon 8006. And we've already fixed that up and we'll just, and we've got to pin it to the dashboard. Okay. Two separate steps. I forget that. Okay. So we'll pin it to the main dashboard. Okay. There we go. And then we will add another one here and we'll call this one portainer. I believe it was 8006. After a while, port numbers start to run together. So, okay, there we go. Application type. There we go. And that's the step I was forgetting. And this is where it's going to have some things automatically taken care of. There's pertainer. And it just changes the, the icon is, is the main thing. So that's fine. And config, we can make some things happen. We'll just leave that alone for right now and that one's already pinned so we'll click save now if you don't like the orientation of this one that's easy enough to fix you just click on the little double arrows on the right hand side of the screen and you'll notice the little pencil icons come up that's how you can change the there we go had to do it a different way I had to do the way it wanted to that's how you can change how things are sorted on the screen so now you start to see we're, we're building a list of what's on this particular tiny mini micro you can add other things to that that's not a problem and if we click the double arrow again then you go back to what's on here now i don't know about you but trying to remember an ip address is not something that i wouldn't prefer to do but in order to get away from the port number we've got to make two steps so first we're gonna go well actually we can do them two separate ways sorry i was changing my mind in midstream you know we're allowed so if we go services dns resolver we're going to give this a name on the network so i've already got another instance of this running on a different tiny mini micro so what we'll do is call this menu two because this is on this is on tiny mini micro number two and 10.0.1.198 we'll click save and this is something what i'm showing you now is a couple extra things that you might not normally think about it but it does make things a little bit easier so we've got the resolver in place and once this is started then we're good now we'll go back to portainer what we're going to do is we're going to stop the heimdall container for right now because we're making a change so we don't i don't want to upset its apple cart we'll go under networks now this is the secret sauce in docker and they don't make this easy to find i've seen a lot of command line options that got kind of confusing especially if you're not used to working with docker so we'll click on add network and we will call this one pubnet and we're going to select the driver mac vlan now this is important this is what's going to let us do what we want to do we've got to give it the parent network card so that's where we're going to come back over here and we'll go scroll up our list here and it should be en01 all right and then we've got to put that in otherwise it's not going to work right en01 now first we've got to make the configuration this is what we're doing at this point 10.0.1.0 slash 16 no 24 i'm getting ahead of myself here and gateway is 10.0.1.1 now here's how you control how much of the ip range it's handing out if you give it slash 24 it's going to try to hand out addresses in the whole range. You can do some excluded IPs, or what I found is if you do 10.0.1.0 slash, I had to do my math right, 25, that's going to basically shift it. And we got to do one other thing here 128, and that's when we're splitting the range in half and that's what's going to control the ip addressing that it's going to be looking for and an access control we'll leave that alone there's really no reason so we'll create network okay the network's been created the next step is we go back in to add a network i know we've already done this once before but we, there's a method to the madness here and we will call this pubnet main we just got to give it a different name. Again, we're going to go to Mac VLAN. Since we've already created the configuration, now we're going to create a network from it. And we're going to select the configuration. So you can have multiple configurations. This is the beauty of it. But this is where going through Portainer to do this is going to save you a lot of hair pulling and a lot of heartburn. We'll just leave everything the way it is. So we'll click Create Network. We go back here to Networks. Now you see PubNet Main and PubNet. Uh, we could you could probably call it like PubNet config just to make it make a little more sense. But anyway, see, it says driver null. 
but you know just you needed to know about the mac v lamp we'll go back up here to container we'll go into heimdall then we will go down here to connected networks so we're going to leave the bridged network which is what we're using the shared ip to get to it then we will go down here and select pubnet main and we will say join network give just a second to refresh here and it should come back okay see it shows it there it doesn't show an address that's fine we'll fix that one so we'll go up here and we'll start heimdall take it just a second to get started but your indication that everything's going to work right is guess what there is the ip address that we're going to be using so if we go over here and there's heimdall Let's go back here and double check something. Pubnet main. All right, yeah, everything looks right. So what we've done, we've done two things. We've now made it to where we can get its own unique address and we don't have to worry about all the port redirecting. Because you notice when I went to Heimdall, I went to just its IP address. So that makes it that much simpler to do. And then you can do things like uh, adding net data on here there's all sorts of things that that you can do and if you want this to have a static address then i would say probably having pfsense do it would make things a little bit simpler a couple of things you want to think about doing now remembering it by ip address is probably not going to be the favorite thing in your list to do so if we go down here and go into services resolver and you can go down here and do a host override and you can see we've got everything from set for that. And you might want to make a comment on doing it. Another thing to think about doing, and this is where it's going to be easier in PFSense to do it, is do a DHCP reservation or giving it a static IP uh, if you want to do it. I would err on the side of caution that it's going to be easier to do it with PFSense because that way if you change out devices, all you got to do is just change the MAC address and everything else will pretty much follow in place. But this is what makes it easy to handle. And going in with Portainer to give it an address, and see, this is where you can look at your MAC address, and it should be unique if you're running, or especially when you're running more than one Docker host, having the MAC address to double check to make sure what's going on. And really, that's you can't make it a whole easier. That that way, it's going to be helping you use Heimdall and Docker and everything really get a, a nice configuration up and running. So give this a try today. I think you're going to like it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.